infrastructure and investment. The fifth strong support pillar of this budget is to transform India is infrastructure and investment. In the road sector, there were more than 70 th projects that were languishing at the beginning of the year due to legacy factors. Aggrieved uh, aggregate length of these projects was about 8,300 kilometers evolving 1 lakh crore investment. With exemplary and proactive intervention under the leadership of my colleague Shri Gadkari, nearly 85% of these projects have been put back on track. India's highest ever kilometers of new highways were awarded in 2015. At the same time, India's highest ever production of motor vehicles was achieved in 2015. This is a sign of growth of the economy, but it presents a challenge also. Therefore, we have speeded up the process of road construction. I have proposed to allocate a sum of rupees 55,000 crores in the budget for roads and highways. This will be further topped up by an additional 15,000 to be raised by the NHAI through bonds. Thus, the total investment in the road sector, including the rural Gram Sadak Yojana allocation, would be rupees 97,000 crores during 2016-17. Together with the capital expenditure on railways, which Sri Suresh Prabhu has announced a few days ago, the total outlay on roads and rail in 2016-17 will be a mammoth 2,18,000 crores. We further expect to approve nearly 10,000 kilometers of national highways in 2016-17. This will be much higher than the two previous years the pace of completion of road projects will also rise to 10,000 kilometers in 2016-17. In addition, nearly 50,000 kilometers of state highway will also be taken up for upgradation as national highway. The total outlay for infrastructure in the budget estimates of 2016-17 now stands at rupees 2,21,246 crores. <laughs> Madam, this is an important uh, announcement. Passenger traffic on our roads has been made more efficient for the benefit of the common man and the middle class. This is a totally unreformed sector which, serves, which suffers from several impediments. Abolition of permit Raj will be our medium term goal. Government will enact necessary amendments in the Motor Vehicles Act and open up the road transport sector in the passenger segment. An enabling ecosystem which will provide for the which, which will be provided for the states, which will have a choice of adopting the new legal framework. Entrepreneurs will be able to operate buses on various routes subject to efficiency and safety norms. The major benefit of this game-changing initiative will be the provision for a more efficient public transport facilities, greater public convenience, new investments in more bound sectors, creation of new jobs for our youth, growth of startup entrepreneurs, and other multiplier effects. These measures will take us faster down the road to development. In 2015, India's major ports have handled the highest ever quality of cargo. We have also added the highest ever capacity in major ports. We have started a series of measures for modernizing ports and increasing their efficacy. The Sagarmala project has already been rolled out. We are planning to develop new greenfield ports, both in the eastern and western coasts of India. The work of the national waterways is already being expedited. Rupees 800 crores has been provided for this initiative. In civil aviation sector, the government is drawing up 
an action plan for revival of unserved and un underserved airports. There are 160 airports and airstrips with state governments which can be revived at an indicative cost of rupees 50 to 100 crores each. We will partner with the state governments to develop some of these airports for regional connectivity. Similarly, 10 out of the 25 non-functional airstrips with the Airport Authority of India will also be developed. <coughs> Another major announcement, India is blessed with rich natural resources, including oil and gas. However, their discovery and exploitation has been below our potential. Imports of hydrocarbons occupy a larger share of India's imports. There is a situation of rising demand, near stagnation in production, and consequent rapid increase in imports. As a part of our drive towards self-sufficiency, the government is considering to incentivize gas production from deep sea, ultra deep water, and high pressure, high temperature areas, which are presently not exploited on account of higher costs and higher risk. A proposal is under consideration for new discoveries and areas which are yes to commence production. First, to provide calibrated market freedom. Second, to do so at a predetermined ceiling price to be discovered on the principle of landed price of alternate fuels. This will bring considerable amount, uh, investment in, the, in this segment. In the other segment of infrastructure, our government has achieved the highest coal production growth in over two decades, highest ever capacity in addition in generation, highest ever increase in transmission lines and in distribution of LED bulbs. In the power sector, we need to diversify the resources of power generation for long-term stability. The government is drawing up a comprehensive plan spanning over 15 to 20 years to augment investment in nuclear power generation. Budgetary allocation up to rupees 3,000 crore per annum, together with public sector investment, will be leveraged to facilitate the required investment for this purpose. To augment infrastructure spending further, government will permit mobilization of additional finances up to rupees 31,300 by the NHAI PFC, REC, ERIDA, NABAD, and Inland Water Authority through raising of bonds in 1617. Our private sector plays a very important role in developing infrastructure, as many of which are implemented in the public-private partnership. I would like to announce three initiatives to reinvigorate this sector and resolve future and pending issues. One, a public utility resolution of disputes bill will be introduced during 2016-17 to streamline an institutional arrangement for resolution of disputes in infrastructure relating to construction contracts, PPP, and public utility contracts. Two, guidelines for renegotiation of PPP concession agreements will be issued. Keeping in view the long-term nature of such contracts and the potential uncertainties of the real economy without compromising transparency. Three, a new credit rating system for infrastructure which gives emphasis to various inbuilt credit enhancement structures will be developed instead of relying on standard perception risks which often result in mispriced uh, 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 loans. These, madam, I hope, will expedite uh, the, the, the commencement of some of the stalled projects. I would like to announce further reforms in our FDI policy. The changes proposed are in the area of insurance and pension, asset reconstruction companies, stock exchanges, etc. Details of these changes are given in an annexure to the budget speech. The duty drawback scheme has been widened and deepened to include more products and countries. The government will continue to, to take measures to support the export sector. 
our FDI policy has also to address the requirements of the farmers and our food processing industry. A lot of fruits and vegetables grown by our farmers either do not fetch the right price or fail to reach the market. Food processing industry and trade should be more efficient. 100% FDI will be allowed through FIPB route in the marketing of food products produced and manufactured in India. I think this will give an impetus uh, 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 to the food processing ministry uh, uh, to enhance this sector. This will benefit the farmers, give impetus to the food processing industry and create vast employment opportunities. A new policy of management of government investment in public sector enterprises including disinvestment and strategic sale has been approved. We have to leverage the assets of the CPSCs for generation of resources for, re for investment in new projects. We will encourage CPSCs to divest individual assets like land manufacturing unit to release their asset value from make, for making investments in new projects. The Niti Aayog will identify the CPSCs for this strategic sale. We will adopt a, a comprehensive approach for efficient management of the government investment in CPSCs by addressing issues such as capital restructuring, dividend bonus shares, etc. The Department of Disinvestment is being renamed the Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, the DEPAM.